name is Lisa Allshafer, and today we have David Armstrong with us. He is the author of the book Messages from the Spirit World. David wrote this book as a result of a near-death experience he had back when he was 17 years old, and today he's going to tell us more about that experience as well as what he's going to offer in his book Messages from the Spirit World. Thank you, David. Thanks. It's nice to be here. When I was 17 years old, I had a near-death experience that changed my life forever. And at the time, um, I didn't really have a lot of understanding as to what was going on. So I went to see um, our, a teacher at our university, and she recommended I go see a lady who was working on her dissertation for a thesis, um, and she dealt with near-death experiences. And so I, I spent about two or three days talking to her about all the different experiences that I had, and those experiences she said, largely paralleled uh, some of the other people that she'd been interviewing. I'm here today as a living testament to the fact that uh, I survived it, and through this I had uh, awarenesses that uh, I got from going to the other side and realizing that everything that we experienced on Earth was different than what we'd been taught. And at first I was sort of angry, thinking that we've been lied to, um, that everything, you know, in heaven and all this was uh, sort of an illusion and just a little bit of the truth, a sprinkling of the truth. Um, the first thing that happened is I had moved from the third dimensional existence, leaving my body behind, going into what they call the astral body, and going into a fourth dimension uh, where the astral bodies are. And from there, I saw this light tunnel, this big white light tunnel, and I went directly toward it and up into it. And it was just really, uh, just amazing. Uh, and so I felt that I was traveling to a distant location. Uh, my spirit guides later told me this is a shortcut to the sixth dimension where our soul resides. And so, of course, when I got there, I had a lot of questions about the dimensions and you know the reality I was living in and why I was there. What was my purpose? What, why did I incarnate? Uh, so I think I'd like to start off with, um, I'm in the sixth dimension now, and I'm having a life review of what I've been up to up to that point, and discovering that uh, I was going off my spirit path completely. Uh, I thought what I wanted to do with my life was become a rock star, and you know, I was a guitarist and playing in a group. Uh, but that wouldn't really serve the purpose that I needed to, to share my messages uh, that I had and the healings that I do and this type of thing. So uh, when I had my near-death experience, I think it was a wake-up call or a review period for me uh, to get back on my spirit course. And the first thing I realized is that <clears throat> we have a permanent soul that cannot be destroyed and that does live in the sixth dimension and that soul is just massive uh, compared to our spirit. Our spirit is just a spark of our soul that comes down into the earthly body and if it weren't for the spirit we wouldn't be living. So the spirit is very important. Um, our soul is just a spark of the universal creator and that's a being that uh, was created by the master creator. Um, the energy, all it is, prime source, whatever you want to call it. But the spirit world likes to call uh, and differentiate between the two as there's a master creator and that universal creators are just a spark of the master creator. So the whole thing um, was quite different than what I've been taught, that there is a God. So in a sense, there's nothing wrong with the idea um, that there is a God, because there is. Um, but it's, it's a little different than perhaps what we've been taught in some of the churches and institutions that I belong to. Um, and after um, I was there, I realized that, you know, there's many dimensions. Um, and they talked about 13 different dimensions. Um, and the dimensions are still building and constantly will be. But it takes millions of years for each dimension to be created. And in the sixth dimension, um, they gave me a little bit of a review 
of what they call the celestial realm, which is comprised of the fourth, fifth, and sixth dimensions, and that we were living in what's called the physical realm, which is the first, second, third dimension. Uh, above the celestial realm, we have the angelic realm, which is the seventh, eighth, and ninth dimension, and then the macroscopic realm, which is comprised of the 10th, 11th, and 12th dimension. The 13th dimension is actually a microscopic realm, and all these dimensions flow into a circle. So something that, that I refer to sometimes as the circle of life, like everything is circular in the universe. Um, our solar system is circular, the sun is circular, the moon. Uh, even things that we see that might be rectangular, triangle-shaped or anything are made up of molecules that are circular. So uh, the nature of the universe is circular and uh, the dimensions um, flow into one another. And we've all lived in all dimensions. I was surprised to find out that not only was um, reincarnation the norm, that uh, we've all lived perhaps thousands and thousands of lives, each one of us, and we've probably lived in all dimensions. Uh, and that I had certainly been in a lot of different dimensions and that I had been, uh, you know, in creator realms as well. But I really felt more comfortable coming back to the third dimension because I had a message to teach humanity. But when I got here, it's just like everyone, we sort of forget what it is we're here for. Uh, the slate has been cleaned of all our past lives so that we're able to concentrate on the existence that we have. For this is the lifetime that's of the most, uh, utmost importance and all the other lifetimes combined uh, don't have to interfere with this lifetime. If they did, I think it would be just a total mess. But <clears throat> I didn't want to return to Earth unless I retained some of the understandings uh, that I got when I went to the other side. So I was begging them, you know, to stay. I didn't want to come back to Earth. I felt that I was at a great place, uh, that I didn't need to go back. But they said I'd signed up to do this and I hadn't even hardly begun my journey. I was only 17 years old at the time. And one thing I did ask is that I'd be able to retain uh, most of what I learned from the other dimensions or at least have some communication with the spirit guides that, you know, would be a clear uh, connection and they didn't see that there would be anything wrong with that so they decided that they would allow me to have that uh, connection and remembrance so when I got back yeah, you know I, I remember some of the past lives and, and a lot about the dimensions and I started thinking that you know a lot of this information is so different than what we're being taught uh, and it, it maybe differs from the religious perspective that you know, if I did come out with this, um, I didn't think that humanity was ready to hear it. I was only 17 at the time, and I really didn't feel I was ready, but my uh, psychologist lady that I was talking to about the different dimensions said, this needs to go in a book someday, and when you're ready, um, then you need to categorize it and put it all down. But it would be a good idea if you document everything that you remember in case at some point in your life you start forgetting. I really never forgot the experience. Uh, maybe some of the small details have disappeared, but for the most part, um, whenever I forgot little details that I wanted to know, the guides would fill me in. So they started talking to me about, it's time to write a book now. And I believe that most of the information um, to be the truth, because in the 45 years, uh, you know, since I started communicating with the spirit world when I was about 10. And in those years, um, they had validated just about everything that they had told me in some way, shape, or form. So as I got older, I began to trust the information, and they're still sending me validations to this day. I think, you know, when you live in a physical existence, you always have questions and doubts. And, you know, but doubting the truth uh, doesn't get you anywhere. And I found out too, if I follow my truth, that it leads to greener pastures than I had ever imagined. Uh, I tried one time to go on a little bit different path um, and thought that uh, I could create a rather large company and it was all about the money. And, 
the wool got pulled right out from under me. It's like uh, everything in my universe was collapsing. And it was a wake-up call so that I get back on my spirit path. And the minute I did, all of the things that I've been losing started to be returned to me in some way, shape, or form. Um, again, uh, the, the mind is a very powerful thing. And we've given up in many ways and decided that we're not very powerful and we don't have abilities. Um, and uh, if we continue to live our lives in the belief that we're not empowered, um, it's not going to lead us to the truth. So we decided to create a book and uh, some years later, um, I think it's been in the progress for three or four years now, we finally got to the point where we're getting it through editing, it's about to launch, and it's called Messages from the Spirit World. So, David, I know in your book you talk a lot about the mind and how to better work with the mind so that we can be better at manifesting, being more clear in our thinking, how to really be accessing the power of our mind. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, the first thing I found out um, about the mind was a little different than what they're maybe teaching in universities and stuff, um, is that we have a greater part of ourself called the superconscious mind and it consists of uh, the majority of who we are, it's part of our spirit. And a smaller part of us is the conscious mind. And the subconscious, uh, we've been giving the subconscious mind powers that it just doesn't have. And the subconscious is a very small part of who we are as well, but it's still there. So when we started talking about the three minds, it started to all make sense to me that the superconscious is, uh, is, is what we connect to when we connect to our soul. Um, so we can ask our superconscious mind for help and for things, and of course we can ask uh, other beings, uh, we can talk to guides, and we can ask angels for their assistance. And we're doing this through the part of our mind called the superconscious mind. So the book talks a lot about the superconscious mind and uh, the three powers of the mind. You know, I've read the book, and it's, it's just a wonderful book, and it's just so illuminating, and I've, I um, have gleaned so much information from it that just complements some of what I've already learned, but so much of it is so new. But it makes just really good sense what it is that you are talking about um, in a way that um, doesn't necessarily so much conflict, but just brings clarification to some of the things that perhaps we've been taught in the past um, as a way to better work with the information to better our own lives. One of those uh, subjects that you cover in your book is about how to communicate better with the spirit world. And I think that's so significant in being able to do because we have this ability and you really do a lot to help us to tap into that ability in your book. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure, the book has a, a third part uh, that talks about all the different um, methods that we can use to get in touch with our spirit guides and, and ways uh, of treating ourselves and our bodies. Uh, what types of things might be preventing us from connecting to our spirit world is also uh, penciled out in there. Um, it's a huge topic, of course. Uh, you could probably have an entire book just on connecting with the spirit world, but I think there's enough information in the book to get most people started in the right direction. Um, and if we've ever had an inkling that we are hearing uh, from our spirit guides, and we probably are, um, there are many different ways that they end up communicating with us telepathically, and it's sort of an inner knowing. It's, it's like, uh, you know, an aspect of yourself can be opened up, and I talk about in, in this part two of the book, I talk about the 31 senses. And even Stanford uh, Research Institute has talked about all these different senses. So there's nothing that um, humanity had not discovered. There's a lot more than 31 senses that we have abilities as humans. But we're focusing on the 31 senses because just those enough are, are enough to really empower us and bring us to another level of thinking and understanding.
Well, I'm really excited for this book to launch. I again, I've read it myself, and I'm quite uh, I'm quite encouraged by the information. Um, I will definitely be spreading the word about it myself, and I am very glad that you were able to join us today. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Lisa.